Hi again, Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com guide to CyberLink Power Director Ultimate. And here we are in part six of our eight part series, basic training for CyberLink Power Director. Now I want to look at keyframing. Keyframing is found throughout the program. As a matter of fact, virtually every tool in the program can be influenced by keyframing. But I want to just demonstrate the basics of keyframing because once you understand the basics, you can really go a long way toward creating custom animations, uh, controlling your audio at specific levels, and doing a lot of very cool things. I have a still photo that I've added to my timeline and I'm going to select it on the timeline. And then I'm going to the Tools function button, and underneath it, I'm selecting Pan and Zoom. Now, Pan and Zoom works on a photo. There is a similar tool that can be used on video clips, but it is a different tool. You can see once I selected that clip or that still photo and clicked on Pan and Zoom, I got to this wonderful screen where there are a bunch of preset Pan and Zoom. So I can add a random Pan and Zoom to all of the photos on my timeline. I can add specific pans and zooms presets all over here or I can right down here at the very bottom select user defined if, if I click on user defined this magic motion designer opens up and in this magic motion designer I can create a simple pan and zoom over this photo and use keyframes to do so now keyframes are usually represented as little diamonds in this case this little diamond here at the beginning of the timeline this there by default when I have my playhead directly over it it turns red and when it turns red you notice I also get corner handles around the outside of my picture. Now I'd like to begin my pan and zoom with a close-up of that woman. So I'm just going to grab this corner handle here and drag it in and drag on the center here so that I have a close-up of the woman. And you see over here in the upper right hand corner there's a preview screen that shows you what that view will look like. So this is where I'm going to begin my pan and my zoom and I'm going to move the playhead out here to the end of the timeline. Once I do that, I can click on Add Keyframe. This little diamond with a plus next to it. Once a keyframe is added, you notice it's red, I can reset the position for this square. So I can widen it back out. And that's really all there is to keyframing. Keyframing means that you have these little points on here, these little diamonds that represent various settings, in this case a view setting. And between this view setting at the beginning of the timeline and this view setting, the program is going to automatically create an animation between them. So I'm going to move the playhead back to the beginning. I'm going to do that just by clicking on this previous keyframe button here. And now when I click play, you can see the motion of that box changing from the first keyframe setting to the last and I'm just going to click OK. You could have seen it up here in the upper right hand corner looking at the preview but if I click OK down here on my timeline when I play the clip on my timeline or when I click play that still photo on my timeline I have a nice pan and zoom. Now there are a lot of ways you can apply pans and zooms. Uh, over a photo is probably the most obvious. But virtually every tool in the program has keyframing represented in some form or another. I'm going to move the playhead back here. Remember our fireworks from our last session? I'm just going to double click to open them up in the particle designer here where our fireworks are. You see these little diamonds under position? These diamonds are keyframes. So these keyframes are influencing the movement of that little comet there, that little particle emitter and they each serve as little waypoints for its movement, its position. We can make an animation happen more quickly by moving the keyframes closer together. We can select a keyframe and delete it and change the animation that way. A number of really cool things you can do. So using keyframes, you can create special effects, you can create animations, you can build your own particles, you can build your own special effects, you can animate your titles, you can animate your video, and you can even control at specific levels your audio so that that way when a narrator is talking, the audio for the music in the background goes quiet while the narrator is speaking and comes back up again all done with keyframes. Keyframing is the most powerful tool in the program and well, well worth getting to know.